Anthropic just recently launched Agent Skills, and I believe this will be just as important as MCPs. And honestly, maybe even more. Soon enough, other AI companies might come up with their own type of skills or just standardized to how Anthropic did it, really similar to the MCPs as well. So we'll cover today what are Agent Skills, Agent Skills versus MCPs, how to create your own custom skill, Agent Skills in Claude.ai, Agent Skills in Claude Code, and then finally, how to use the agent skills through an API. So starting off with what are agent skills. TLDR skills are instructional documents. And to go a bit further, skills are instructions that help agents use its computer access more effectively. And you'll get to that by understanding why do we even need this. So I've written down a bunch of different attempts to feeding context over to an AI agent because context for LLM is basically everything. For it to perform the way you want it to, it'll either fetch for that context on its own, or ideally you can feed that context over to it. So let's see that in a practical example. Suppose this box right here is a conversation you're having with Claude Code, or even inside of the interface for Claude, and then you want to send it a PDF and have it fill up the form inside of that PDF. Suppose that PDF is this one right here. You can see that this PDF allows you to type anything inside of these forms, but it's not as easy as this for the LLMs because they have to understand what is the field they're typing into, what is the label that's next to that field, how they're going to type inside of that field, everything. So whenever you send a vague prompt like this along with the PDF, it'll try its best to accomplish the task that you gave it. So in this example, it'll think, okay, I need to read the PDF. Let me try to create a script for that. Now it would search inside of its own training to find some type of script that reads a PDF, would try to use that script, maybe that script wouldn't work, and then it would have a second attempt to create that same script, execute the script, read the PDF. As soon as it finally creates a script that reads the PDF, then it would say something like, seems okay, now I need to create a script to write inside of the forms of that PDF. And then the same work of creating a script to then write inside of that prompt. Maybe that script wouldn't be correct. Then it would have a second attempt. And this is just an example. Maybe it would get it right in the first shot. Maybe it would take five, seven, eight, 15 attempts to actually create a successful script. But during all this execution, since you didn't give it enough context, you'll have a problem of a huge context window. And more context window means that it's basically slower and you're being charged for each one of these tokens that are produced. Now, you might be thinking, oh yeah, but I'm not charged per token since I use Cloud Code. Actually, you kind of are, as sometimes you just run out of tokens per five hour window of token refresh, or in a cloud, you can also run out of tokens per week. So yeah, this is the worst case scenario. Now, if we go down to attempt two, in this attempt, you acknowledge that it needs a specific code for both reading the PDF as well as writing inside of the form. So what you do here is feed it that exact context. Your prompt is now fill in this form with my name, use this script to read, and then use this one to write inside of the form. So now in this scenario, it doesn't really need to worry about fetching for the context. It already knows the script that it needs to use, and it just goes on and uses that exact context that you fed it. But the issue with this is that you'll always have to inform the context for the entire script. So every time you want to run this same script, if it's something recurring during your workflow, you'll ideally not want to keep adding this all the time. So a smart move would be to just store this inside of a markdown file inside of your project. Now, usually for these operations, you don't just deal with two functions like reading and writing in a form. You deal with things like editing the PDF, converting the PDF, annotations. And you can see this inside of the skills that Anthropic built specifically for reading PDFs. Inside of scripts, you'll notice that they have eight different Python scripts just for handling PDFs. Now, with this markdown file, you could just specify check the deal with PDFs dot markdown and fill in this PDFs form. Now the AI would think, okay, I need to read the PDF, so let me check the markdown file instructed. Reads entire markdown, and this is still shorter than the first example, since you're already feeding it the context. But for some cases where you have a lot of different functions in here, it could even be bigger than that first example. Since everything from that markdown file 
is inserted in the context window during this conversation. So we're back to the first problem where we have a huge context window. Now let's move down here to our fourth and final attempt, which is using the agent skills. With agent skills, now all you have to do is just type in fill in this PDFs form with whatever you want it to fill in the form with. And then it'll understand that it has a skill that can fetch inside of the documents, find only the specific instructions to read the PDF and then the specific instructions to write inside of the form, insert that as context inside of the context window for the LLM and have in there only essentially what we need, all without us having to remember the entire script and placing it in there during the chat. Some members from my community argued that this might be useless since you could already just assign a markdown file and tell the LLM where the other markdown files are. This has been done inside of the AI Forager starter kit for a while now. So inside of the cloud.md, I refer to the four LLMs folder, which has a bunch of instructions regarding admin routes, APIs, authentication, database, and everything else. But the thing is that we have a layer of agents and inside of the agents, we run LLMs. If this becomes a standard for all coding agents, not just cloud code, eventually you can start up any project inside of Codex, inside of the Gemini CLI, and it will understand all of the different skills for that given project and insert those in the context window of the LLM. But this insertion isn't like this one above where it inserts the full context. The only thing it gets inside of the context window are the metadata for those skills. And I'll explain more about that in just a second, but this is all to say that eventually this becomes a standard. So instead of having a different naming for each project, like this one for underlying LLMs, and then having to place that instead of cloud.md for it to read the four LLMs and everything, the skills are already hardwired to the agent. Just a moment back, I was talking about inserting only metadatas inside of the context window, not the entire markdown file. And what do I mean about that? Basically, the skill.md has this specific format. You have the name of the skill as well as the description. Only that is inserted to the context window. So this way, the agent system prompt has short snippets from each skill appended. This way, whenever the user asks something that has to do that with that specific skill, it'll identify that it has that skill, reads that skill markdown file, understands that it has a specific tool to use, uses the tool and then completes its task. Now let's go over to skill versus MCP. And I believe that these are kind of attached to one another because they have to do with how you're going to insert context for the LLM, for the agent. But honestly, one has more to do with your internal workflow, what your project usually does. And the other one, the MCP, actually has to do with connecting with third-party apps. Now, the way I see that skills can end up crushing MCPs and making them unusable is if companies just start instructing through the skills how to use their APIs, as we've been using APIs just like forever now. And if instead of creating a whole other server that we have to worry about security issues and all that, we can just write and markdown file specifying over to the LM how to hit those endpoints and what they should expect of response and everything, it just honestly feels like a better option. Though, I mean, MCPs have some of their own properties and maybe people have gotten used to it by now. Now, how can you create your own custom skill? First of all, I would recommend you go over to this website right here that instructs absolutely everything that you need to know to create a skill. But mostly a skill is something like this, a folder with other folders if needed. Inside of these folders, we can have markdown files that specifies what each of these given tasks do. Then we can also have code related scripts like these Python scripts that aren't really going to be inserted into the context window as well. So you can actually come up with a huge script that will only be executed by the agent. The only thing the agent is responsible for is executing that Python script, seeing its results and understanding like, so now I have successfully created the task or no, I haven't successfully created the task. I need to ask the user whatever. You also have the skill.md. Everything is in uppercase. You have the metadata over here and the rest of this description basically tells the LLM what is the overall task this skill helps accomplish. Usually whenever I'm watching a tutorial like this and a person starts reading long text like this, I just bore out. So if you want to read this, and I highly recommend you do to actually understand the structure of skills, just pause the video and and yeah, just read through. Okay, so the other ways we can create a skill is by using a skill from Anthropic. 
Anthropic has its own skills, so you'll usually see a differentiation between Anthropic skills and custom skills, which are the ones that we can create and send over to Anthropic or just keep it inside of our own Claude code projects. So let's take a look at how we can use agent skills inside of Claude.ai. I have already made an example here, but to get to this page, you can go down here, click on settings, you'll be redirected to this page, go down to capabilities, and then all the way down here, you can select any one of these skills. I tested nearly every single one of them while preparing for this video. This canvas design basically allows you to create the style of poster images. I asked it to create something related to Lion and then it created this one. It's kind of a geometric abstract poster that, I mean, since it was kind of coded up, it feels pretty awesome and was completely created by using skills. You can check out exactly how this skill was built over here in this repository, just go over to skills, uh, canvas design. And inside of the canvas design, I found it interesting that the skill markdown is just kind of huge. It's a huge prompt. And what they have different from that is a canvas font folder where they specify a bunch of different fonts that are probably used to generate those posters. Now, if you want to use the PDF document skills, you won't see them listed up here, but that's just because they are already inserted to the Cloud AI agent. You can just get a PDF with a form like this one, send it over and say something like, use the PDF skill and fill in this form with dummy data, please. It'll read that PDF skill, do the exact process to fill in all of the forms with some random dummy data. You can upload your own custom skill by clicking on the upload skill button right here. The custom skill I created is specifically for my project inside of Cloud Code and won't really work as a skill for the Cloud.ai website. If you want to see a specific example for that, I recommend you check out this video from Mark Kashef where he shows specific skills that he created for Cloud.ai that generates entire presentations. Now let's head on to my favorite, the agent skills inside of Cloud Code. In the video I posted yesterday, I talk about this tool right here, which is called Vibe Kanban. You can basically have a bunch of tasks inside of this Kanban and make them trigger whatever coding agent you want, like Cloud Code, for example. And then it'll solve the task and like keep moving it forward through these boards, which is pretty interesting. But I wanted it to be even more brain dead. So for example, to use the project normally, you would say something like add hello world to the readme. MD. I can hit create task and done. The task is right there. I can click on attempts and this would attempt to use cloud code to try to resolve that given instruction. And this one is obviously just an example, but let me delete this for now. If I wanted to just talk to an LLM and have the LLM generate all of the tasks for me, one way I could do that and is exactly what I did yesterday was create an entire markdown file. And this would fall into this problem right here where I have a single markdown file. And I mean, it's not so long, like 235 lines. But the problem here is that I have a bunch of different functions. I can create a task, delete task, list, list branches, list projects, update tasks. And if I just want it to create a task, I don't need it knowing how to delete a task or how to do anything else. So if now I send something like use my Kanban skill to add a task for a hello world in the readme.md file, it will now know that it has that vibe Kanban skill. Look inside of this markdown file, understand that it has a script called create task.py. It will look inside of the create task.markdown. This file has around 54 lines and it instructs to use the create task.py. This can even be shorter, but yeah, just did it, succeeded, and now I have the task generated inside of my Kanban. Now notice that because it already led the skill.markdown, if I ask it to now delete that task, please, it already knows that it should look inside of the delete task.markdown file, exactly this. Know that it should now use delete underline task.py, delete that task, and it's all done. By the way, I've placed this vibe Kanban skill down in the description for free, just in case you want to take a look at the, its structure to build your own skill. The last part is using the agent skills API. I did record everything previously, but watching back, I noticed that my screen was just frozen. Honestly, the thing about using the skill API is that you're able to send a skill that you generated over to the Anthropic server. So for example, I didn't really create this skill up here called Canvas Design. 
It is the skill I mentioned earlier from the Anthropic Skills Repository. And my prompt was as easy as getting this curl, copying it, sending over to Claude. Since this is programmatic, I wouldn't really recommend that you do it like this. It's like the laziest approach to send a request. But I just sent the context of how to design that request and specify that this curl helps me create a skill. The skill I want to send is, and then specified the folder, which is this folder up here. Please do so. My Anthropic API key is in the .m. And then I specified Anthropic underline API underline key. After doing this, it got me back a response similar to this one where I have an ID for that specific skill. And with this ID right here, I can now reform that through my own request and build my own app that generates Canvas designs of geometric posters. So eventually in my last prompt, I just grabbed the entire page, sent it over as context and described that based on this documentation, create a page called skills that has a chatbot where I can use my Canvas design skill. This will likely output a PNG, which the user should be able to download. By the way, if you want to take a look at the documentation, it shows exactly that, how you can download the generated files from the skills. Since again, the skill executes everything in an agent virtual machine. So whatever is generated through the API is probably generated in the Anthropix server. After it was done, I now have access to this. Let me use exactly this prompt. So create a minimalist poster about artificial intelligence. And the message I got was basically this one where it says, you are poor and you have no credit balance. Okay. So I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, after losing some aura points, let's see what we get now. And we still got an error. It seems like we also got an error from the API key for skills. So let's send that in as well. Okay, so after sending it the prompt, what it answered back was a message not styled in Markdown because I forgot to ask it to make the response in Markdown format. But what we're after are the files. And the first file is the PNG, which is the poster. Then the second file is a Markdown, which explained the concept behind this artificial intelligence geometric poster. By the way, if you ever need to delete a skill, first you'll have to delete the skill version. And to do that, just fetch for the list of skills that you have. And then based on that skill ID for the given skill, you use it to delete that version. And then you'll be able to actually delete the skill. Remember to leave a like if this video helped you at all. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.